Today we're looking at section 1.5 using Excel to find best fit curves out of business calculus with Excel. The background is outside of math class the most important functions that we'll deal with are actually collections of data rather than formulas. So with Excel we can add trend lines to try and come up with a best fitting curve. Notably trend lines can be several different kinds of functions not necessarily lines. The basic idea is going to be plot the data, add the appropriate trend line, find the equation of the trend line, and bring the equation back to give predicted values for the data. Issues to address are picking the right kind of equation, getting enough significant digits, and at times changing the base point to get a better equation. As is normal practice, I'll follow the structure of the text but do different examples since video examples of the text examples are already attached to the text. The first example I want to look at is finding a trend line, actually a line that's a best fitting curve. In Excel I've started with some data that as you look at it looks like it's trying to be a linear function. It's about y is about five times x, but it goes up and down and it's not exactly there. So I'm going to highlight the data then I'm going to want to insert a scatter plot. We're not going to try and fit it. It looks like it's a straight line, even though if I plug in the data, it's not a straight line. I'm going to control click and add a trend line. I'd like the trend line to be linear. I'd like it to be a line. And one of the things I want to do is display the equation on the chart because I'd like to get this equation. I'm going to highlight the equation and make it bigger so that it's easier to read. And now what I'd like to do is have the predicted value. So I'd like to take this equation and I'm simply going to copy the equation and paste it in. Now I need to translate from math to Excel because x in this case, well I need a times and x is whatever was in A2. So I type that in and it gives me a value. I can now quick fill and this will give me the predicted value for all of the cases. So we notice that this was close to linear. Notice my values aren't that different. I'd like to be able to see how different they are. And my difference is just two or three, which on quantities this size is quite small. But what this has done is say, whatever this was, it looks like it's trying to be a linear function. I'd like to have that so I can predict what value I should give for 95 or 87 or what's a good value for 20 or for 200. This now gives me a formula I can work with. Next I'm going to look at the same idea except with a quadratic function. And so we do the same kind of thing to start out. I'm going to insert a trend line. I mean I'm going to insert a scatter plot. And it looks like it's quadratic. I'm going to add the trend line. But this time my trend line is going to be a polynomial of degree 2 and I see that's pretty well fitting. I'm going to display the equation on the chart. I'm going to make that larger so that it's easier to read. And now I want my predicted value. I'm going to try copying and pasting into the cell. And now notice that the formula is one that Excel won't take because x squared just became x2 x, we don't know what it is, really it's a2, and I don't have the explicit multiplication. So I'm going to need to change the x squared to times a2 squared, and x is times a2. I've trans 
translated the function from normal math notation into Excel's notation. I can check my values. Find the difference. Uh, when I find the difference, I need to have a minus sign there, not an equal sign. And this lets me do the value as I have it. So I can do this and find the linear value of note. One of the things worth noting, I've removed the trend line. I could have added the trend line again. And when I add the trend line, there's nothing that keeps me from adding a linear trend line. It just, if I look at the formula, this is a nice balanced equation, but nice balanced set of data. So the best fitting line is pretty much a line straight through. There's also nothing from keeping me from making a higher degree trend line and saying find the best fit cubic. If I look at my formula, though, the cubic term is pretty well non-existent. This really is something that's a quadratic trend line. Next, we'd like to look at what happens if I try an exponential trend line. I'm going to, again, highlight the data insert my scatter plot, add a trend line, my trend line now I'd like to have exponential and I'd like to display the equation on the chart. There's a couple of things of noticing, worth noticing, the equation on the chart Make this a bit larger. The equation on the chart is an exponential in terms of base e. I can once again do my projected value. And if I want to do the formula for the projected value, this is a bit more complicated. It's going to be times e is exp for exponential function of the quantity 0 0.098 times a2. And this gives me my formula that I'm looking at. I'd like to make it 12 points so it's the same size as everything else. Depending on the exponential rate, exponential functions are a bit trickier. For mathematics reasons, it likes to do base e, and we don't particularly like things in terms of base e. So one of the things I might do is find out what is equal exp of 0 point zero zero nine eight and I get one point oh oh nine eight four eight if I take my function I'm gonna copy this and paste it in And instead of making it exp of that, I can make it 1.0098.4818 raised to the x power. And I'm going to get the same answer or the same answer to rounding. One of the things I want to look at on this is I'd like to try, 
format the trend label, label options. I'd like to make it a number. And right now, the number of decimal places, I want to pop that up to eight. And what that does is it let me see that the 098 should really be, let's make my font larger so that it's easier to read. This should have been not 098, but 0977741. And that's going to change my base just a bit from to 09 1.00982537 and I'm getting a more accurate projected value. One of the things worth noting, this isn't that important right now where my increment is e to the point 0.00098 but I may find times that my exponential growth is much smaller. That was 10% that if I have a much smaller interest rate, a much smaller growth rate, I can get all zeros in the exponential. And I'd like to have at least three or four significant digits that show up. So this gives an exponential curve. The other thing with exponential curves is we're going to try the same idea, an exponential curve, except sometimes our input is the year, and that gives us other particular problems. So I'm going to format these columns and just hide them. I'd like to show these on a chart. I want to insert my scatter plot. I'm going to add my trend line. I'd like an exponential trend line. And I'd like to display the equation on the chart. And what shows up here is the base is what was the value when x is 0. Now, if I'm starting at $100 and it's going up roughly 10% every decade, Asking what the base when the year was zero, it's like asking what the consumer price index was the year Jesus was born. It just doesn't make any sense for the question. We don't have something for an American value at the year zero, at the turn of the common era. And so frequently what I'd like to do in a case like that is I'd like to make an adjustment, not to X, but to years since start, and I would do that. I'm going to insert a column. Adjusted year. I get to pick which year I would like to be zero. I'm going to say 2020 is a good year for zero. And so I'm going to make it that minus the year. I want it to be the year minus 2020 because I'd like to count forward. I simply copy down. And so this is going to mark years in terms of years since 2020. I now am going to do a similar thing to what I've been doing. I'm going to highlight the two columns that I want to include, insert my scatter plot. Notice that my scatter plot will look amazingly similar, except for the years have changed. And now, when I add my trend line, exponential, and add the equation, it's a prettier looking trend line equation because my base, my time at the base, was 162 instead of the 4 times 10 to the minus 7. Two problems. One is that's an ugly number to deal with, and the other is 4 times 10 to the minus 7, that's 0 
four, and I only have one significant digit, so this is somewhere between 3.5 and 4.5. And here, I've got 162.93. It's the fifth digit where I have uncertainty rather than the, second, the first and second digits where I have uncertainty. So when I'm fitting curves, I'd like to have data that makes sense, and I'd like it so that if it's going to explain it in a base, times e to something, I'd like my base to be a meaningful number. Thank you.